Welcome to Carter's Tiny Homestead. I'm David and I'm visiting a friend on his property. He has chickens and a small garden. I'm gonna take another try at killing chickens again. My name is Davey, life got crazy. I used to get around. Traveling, he said. Mama Mr. Baby, now I'm back in town on the Carter's Tiny Homestead. This here is just the uh, outdoor uh, barbecue uh, stove, basically, you, uh, turkey fryer. And it shoots off propane? Yeah, you got the propane tank heading to that burner underneath, and that pot is about half full of water. How many degrees does it need to be? It needs to be 150 degrees to uh, properly scald the, the feathers. feathers okay. And then you can pluck it very easily, hopefully. These are those roosters that I caught the other day. I brought him over here so he could show me his technique on slaying roosters. This chicken came from my sister's house. Um, he was attacking the other ones and just making their lives miserable. And because he doesn't lay eggs he has to be eaten as meat i mean that's the homesteading way it just is tragic horrible well maybe this will be a less horrible we'll see so here's the apparatus we use for dispatching the chickens what is this this is just a regular latex glove mm -hmm. and then i snipped off the long finger and turned it inside out hollowed a couple of bottle caps, and then used that to seal a balloon on the end. Interesting! And then we have these whipped cream canisters with a little device to activate it. You'll just put it up to the balloon. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm so sneezy. Zoom tight. and give it a little bit of a twist to break the seal. And then, slowly. Oh my goodness. And that's why we have extras. <laughs> what happened? Oh, this one has, dang it. All right, let's do it again. We can grab our knife. Yes, always use sharp knives. Yeah, right. So first step is we have this cap waiting down at the bottom. Oh, okay. And this one goes underneath. And then we gotta wrap the end where we cut the finger around this part. Oh, uh huh. Mm -hmm. And that creates a bit of a seal. Once we slide this up, it gets even more sealed. Mm -hmm. But we don't do that until the balloon goes on as well. Can you put the balloon on the little one? I put the balloon over the small bottle cap and everything gets shut in by the large bottle cap. Mm -hmm. So now we have the latex glove lining the inside, the balloon lining the outside. And also catching, yeah. Those should provide nice airtight seals. And then we just thread this. <laughs> Dang it. We just thread it through. until the bottle caps can pinch together. And I had to search through my recycling to find two bottle caps that actually fit like this. Mm -hmm. And there, we have another kill glove. <laughs> Let's see if it holds air. Okay. Oh yeah, and then you just gotta twist that part, yeah? 
Yep, that's good enough. Oh, did you already clean it? Yes, I rinsed it and cleaned it. Yeah, yes. it was filthy. This is my cooler. Yours is still over there. Oh, and it's still filthy. So we want enough water so the ice is floating. Oh, okay. Wait, then why did I bring a cooler? You brought a cooler to bring yours home. Uh, let me find it just filthy. I'll put it in the bag. So the chicken is going to go into this end of the bag and his head is going to pop out of this end. That way he can be held tight. He won't thrash around while we administer the gas. Okay. That's smart. Um. You recording? Yep. So we got it clamped off. We're going to slip the glove right over. We've got this little band to provide a tourniquet, try and keep the air just around the head, not escape out the back of the glove. And here we go. And he's just going to keep breathing it in. It's just terrible. I know, man. This is the hard part. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from, Cottonmouth Joe? Perfect. You want to take a snapshot of that? Is it 120 degrees? Hot water, 120 degrees. It's hot water, boiling, please. No, it's not really boiling. Scalding temperature is uh, at least 140. You just take it, you dunk it right in. Make sure you get all of it. Dance it around through the, you can use the feet as a handle. If you want to have it then there for 10 to 15 seconds. So about now, pull it out, just test. And when it pulls off like that, you know you're ready. All the feathers go into that waste bucket and you want to move against the grain. You can essentially just rub them off most yeah. of the time. And you can see why we had to get rid of this guy. He had some severe sour crop issues. This was from three days ago and it's still in there. No. So if you just rub against it, here, you take care of the other half of the thigh. You can feel how it comes off. Yeah, like drop bro. And gauge how it uh, comes off easier than other ways. And once the feathers are removed, it almost looks like something you get at the store. Except you grew it, so you know how it's gonna taste. Yeah, and cared for it. Yeah, and the fact that we're participating in this whole process—it's not just a, 
a chicken thigh so much more. Yeah, but you can tell by this he was not in a comfortable state. Yeah. We had to we had to do something and I tried to treat it for a week and it wasn't having. So the wing feathers, they're going to be slightly more difficult to pull, yeah. but they should just come out with a little bit of directly outward force. Oh my goodness. Yeah, you can tell where their uh, flight feathers are more attached. Oh, because they want to uh, shake those off, huh? Exactly. Anything else is just for insulation, but those are needed for escaping, so they don't want to have them. Lose them in that freight, yeah. fight or flight. Oh my goodness! And we got our tail feathers, which are even harder than the wingtips. And we'll just keep going around until we can't find any more feathers. Ew, what's coming out of it? Oil. Chickens secrete oil, especially from this one gland back here. You can see it. It's like a little pimple lump. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have to cut that off before we get into the guts. But we get the feathers first. And that, once we get the feathers, we give it a rinse off the hose. You don't have to worry too much about the feathers on the neck because neck skin is usually discarded. Sometimes if you have too many feathers stuck to your hand, you could just rinse them in a ready pot of water. You want to work quickly once they're dispatched because second by second, all of the bacteria in their gut is going to try to eat the rest of them. Mm. That's decomposition. What's that? The remainders of these feathers yeah. in here. Please. Did you see what time it was? So gross. Too cold. Wait, you said you don't think you really get the neck ones. Right. And we're probably going to cut off the red part where the crop got irritated mm -hmm. as well. So if there are a couple annoying ones, you can wait until right before you cook the bird. Not to do another session of pulling. Yeah, the final pin feather plucking. And then once there's enough off of the bird, we're going to 
the hose off the table. I don't like reusing the scalding water, so we refresh it for every bird. Okay. That looks like enough. Yeah. We gotta hurry before it gets too warm. Uh, grab some more out of the tail feathers. your recording device because it's about to get wet. Yeah, that looks good enough. Don't put it back on the feathers. <laughs> oh, ah. Jack a doodle you. You're next. All right, so that's the feathers. Now we take the plucked bird and we rinse it off. And now comes the evisceration. Evisceration. <laughs> going to take an extra sharp knife that I just sharpened this morning. We're going to... Did you make a video of it? No, I am not. I have not. We're going to pinch right above the cloaca and just go straight through the flesh into the cavity, avoiding the intestines. It's a tough bird. There we go. Slashing. Better than stabbing. There Ew. we go. And we're in. And as long as we avoid the rest of it, we can cut off this oil gland. You see all that oil in there? Oh, looks like it actually rides all the way up here. They squeeze it out of there and then they just rustle around with their feathers to get it in all of their important spots. Like I said, you want a sharp knife. <laughs> okay, now back to this orifice. We see the intestines are under there. We need to make this hole a little bit wider so we can get in there. So we're just going at the sides. Then we need to go follow the hip bone and use our finger on the inside to keep the intestines away from the knife as we slowly cut around the chicken's cloaca. This is the one out way 
of the whole chicken. There's only one? They only have one. They poop an egg out of the same place? Correct. Oh yeah, but that's a rooster. This is a rooster, so... Oh, that's also where the wiener comes from. Well, do you see any other part of it? No, I don't know. <laughs> Interesting. All right, we've done a fairly good job at not nicking the intestines. So we just keep cutting around. Oh boy. <laughs> Here come some witnesses. And work through the other side using the same technique. And the bird is going to make gaseous noises. Especially when you are having to reach inside of it to pull out all of its stuff. Okay, we got most of the chicken butt right here. We just have some connective tissue. Once we get that out, we can start the actual gutting. And this is why you want a couple of knives if one of them just isn't doing it for you. There we go. And that's the end of the chicken's intestine. Oh my goodness. Now that that's free, we can start opening it up some more. And the problem with having a rooster and not a designated meat bird, you don't know how large this cavity is going to be. You might need smaller hands to do it properly. Or you'll risk breaking the breastbone. But you're just trying Ow. to coax it out. Shake it out like a can of dog food. Nope. It is still connected. Oh. Albeit lightly. So I got some connective tissue right here, getting it attached to the front of the body. You can just start slicing through that here. Pardon my entire body getting in the way. Mm -hmm. What am I still using this knife for? And you want to work fast, but you also want to be slow enough to be safe while handling the knife. Totally agree with that. All right. Now it's disconnected from that part, we can start pulling some more. And you can see all of the stuff that you need to get out of there. Mm -hmm. More tissue. With enough effort and just moving around the entire thing, you should be able to get the carcass out without too much problems. I'm gonna don't want to pull too hard or else you'll tear something mm -hmm. and then gut stuff is going to spill out and we also need to open this up and get the crop loose from the neck end it's 
been a good couple of months since I last did this, and that was only my fifth try. And all that yellow stuff is just fat. This is the crop, still has a bunch of Ew. food in it. A bunch of food. That's why this chicken had to be put down. But even with this issue, you are able to eat the bird. The meat isn't soured too much from this. That's where it's getting held. Now, if you were careful, you can save things like the liver, the gizzard, the heart. Here's the liver. This is a bile sac. Chicken liver and onions is a really natural recipe. And this would be, ooh. Yeah, that's the green bile sac. If you puncture that, then everything is tainted. And there's a little bit more liver. It's a little mangled, but that's good giblets. And this is all intestine that can... I can just go. Ew. Mm -hmm. That's gizzard innards. <laughs> And this is the chicken's heart. Now, once that's loose, the crop can be pulled the opposite way since it's too full to go through this part. And now's the time when it's best to separate the neck as well. And find part of the spine and then you gotta just keep cutting and bending chicken neck is pretty tasty when you cook it a long time right next to the whole chicken mm -hmm. I eat it like uh, corn on the cob This whole thing has to go. Sharp knives, everybody. Sharp knives. Bad. Now, you do not want to cut bone, but sometimes there's no other option. <clears throat> Does not want to separate, but I'm going to make it. Okay, that's the chicken neck. 
taken off, rinse that, and we get it chilled right next to the rest of the carcass. And man, everything about this chicken is tough. It really will need to go into a stew. All right, that's the chicken neck. Next to the hearts and the liver, those are all things you can save. It's mostly empty on the inside, but one thing you gotta remember, uh, there's something else. Hey, what is that? That's a glob of fat, or a, uh, a benign tumor. Oh, wow. Yeah, benign, benign and a half. <clears throat> So there were a couple of things wrong with this chicken, but the thing you got to remember is to sweep the back of the ribs on either side of the spine because that's where the lungs are. And if you don't get the lungs out, then it uh, affects the taste of the chicken. Mm. And you kind of just got to hair at it. It should come apart mostly whole, but that's a chicken lung. You can see all of the areas where it can inflate. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Those can be uh, fed back to the chickens if you feel so. It can also be cooked and fed to your dogs. Um, I don't do either, I just compost everything. And that is a relatively cleaned chicken, aside from this one final lung. Meat, bees, those are an issue. That means that we're uh, running out of time. What do you have to do? Just rinse it again and throw it in the ice? Mm -hmm. No, it's mine. Ready? Yep. So now that we got your chicken cleaned, gutted, it's time to take off the feet. You don't want to go after the bone, you want to go in between the bones. Bending them backwards helps you find where the cartilage is. Oh, that's a terrible sound! And then you can cut upwards oh, wow. to remove the last of it. And there you have a chicken foot. Can you save the chicken feet? You can. It can be used at, in broth or to make gelatin. They I wanna keep are it very for... high in collagen levels, especially certain breeds. How do you keep it for keeping? Um, well, you like everything off of an animal. You wanna keep it chilled until it's used. No, I wanna dry it out. I wanna use, I wanna keep it as they are. Oh, you want to preserve it? Yeah. Well... Cold shock keeps them from decomposing short term. And so that can just be kept right there. And then you can figure out a way to pickle them. You can try to epoxy them or dehydrate them. Oh, uh-huh. Uh, there are several different ways for keeping the shape if you just want to keep the shape. Well, I want the whole thing. You want the you want the foot as it is right now. Yeah. I would do some research. Mm-hmm. My name is Gabby, life got crazy, I used to get around. Mama missed a baby, now I'm back in town on the Carter's tiny homestead.